Hello, welcome back. This is section five of the Logic and Mathematical Expressions chapter, The Interlude in Basic Mathematics by Sergey Lang. This is the last section, and um, this is a section that you can probably overlook, especially if you've been reading a lot of math textbooks, because here he talks about the notation he uses, and it's important that the notation be consistent with other math, math textbooks so that you can jump from one to the other without thinking too hard. And he, in this book, he uses a very conserved conservative notation. He doesn't use many advanced symbols at all. So he explains his system here. He says lowercase letters like A, B, and C, uh, those are usually numbers. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, things like that. And then uppercase letters like A, capital A, capital B, capital C, um, these are used to describe points. Particularly, he likes to use P and Q a lot for points. And sometimes he likes to use X and Y. So, um, so A and B, however, capital letters A and B, are typically used for angles. But you'll see A and B used as points. And we tr he says he tries, he tries not to mix them in a section, which, which is a good thing. Now, typically in physics textbooks, we like to use theta and phi for angles and stuff like that. Um, but we're not doing Greek in this chapter, I don't think so. I think you do get some Greek later on. Um, also, later on, he'll be using F and G and capital F and capital G for functions, which you'll learn all about, which are important. Once you learn functions, you can start learning calculus. Or mappings, he'll call them mappings as well. Spoiler alert. When you start to see mappings, you go, oh, wait, he's trying to teach you functions. If you see inside parentheses like A, and B, this is usually a um, uh, sequence of exercises. So these are problems to solve. So, parenthesis A. Uh, in italics, and I can't write italics here, so this would usually mean M and N would be integers. And uh, where they use for abbreviation for words, M is sometimes used as an abbreviation for the measure of an angle A. So, except for m of a, which is the measure of an angle. But that'll be clear when it's done. And for subscripts, he doesn't say this here, but subscripts, you're going to see i and j, k, and, and um, I even see, I don't think we're going to do four dimensions, so don't worry about that. These are usually subscripts. And these are also integers. Subscripts are almost always integers. It's very rare to have subscripts that are not integers, or indices is what he calls them in the last section. Uh, he has this funny little um, comment, he says, if you find anything, any such things in the present book, any mistakes or misuse of notation, then correct them or improve them for yourself or write your own book. <laughs> and the final statement, I love the statement, this is something to consider. Uh, some people call this the, the Feynman principle. If you really want to learn something, if you really want to understand a subject. So he says, this is still the best way to learn a subject aside from teaching it. If you really want to know a subject inside and out, write a book about it. Um, Teaching it is another way, but teaching is kind of like between learning it and writing a book on it. So, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this interlude in logic and mathematical expressions, and you've learned something. Um, coming up next is intuitive geometry, which I think is one of the most interesting and fun parts of math. So, let's get right to it. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. This video is part of my series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can click here to watch the rest of the videos in the playlist. You can click here to learn more about me, and you can click here to support my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.